Good morning everyone, Travis Moran here with Lucky Tackle Box and it is absolutely freezing out right now because fall is finally here. These cold nights only mean one thing, that these shad are gonna be schooling up and these bass are gonna be gorging themselves on them. And the falling erratic action of a spoon can be the perfect imitator of wounded shad, which can entice these active bass. So today, we're gonna head out onto the water and we're gonna break down vertical spooning. It's one of my favorite techniques for fall fishing and can be extremely effective when done correctly. And we're gonna be breaking down rigging, retrieval, and location using Rip and Lips Chaser Spoon, which was included in your Lucky Tackle Box. So let's get right to it, starting with rigging. Now this bait is good to go right out of the package. Just tie it up and you're ready to start fishing. But today I made a couple quick modifications to the one I'm actually using. The first one being is adding a swivel. When you're uh, hopping this bait up and down all day long, reeling it up and down, there's a lot of line twist that develops and that can really start messing with the fishing. So by adding a swivel, that will eliminate the line twist. Then the second thing is I added a feather hook, a chartreuse feather hook. This is because this lake that I fish is normally pretty clear, but because of some rain, off, uh, rain runoff, uh, it's a little bit dingier than normal. And so this is gonna give this bait a little bit more visibility when it's down there. Now starting with the reel, I like a medium to fast uh, speed gear ratio. I tend to go more with a fast speed uh, because the majority of the time you're fishing this bait, you're just hopping it in one spot, right? You're not doing any reeling. The reeling only happens when you catch a fish and when you're actually reeling this bait back to the boat so that you can drop it again. So the faster you can retrieve that line, the more advantage you're gonna get throughout a day. Now then I spool up with eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon. This uh, really allows that bait to sink quickly and also have that nice free flutter action that's gonna generate strikes. All right, the last thing is the rod. I'm using the hybrid stick, which is an extremely versatile fishing rod. It's seven foot, medium, moderate, fast action. Um, so it's got a lot of sensitivity. I can really feel this bait if I get nipped at or anything when it's falling down on slack line. But then when I do hook up, it's uh, got a lot of bend. So when these fish are fighting and trying to make their runs, that uh, nice even bend is going to absorb that fighting fish and that fish isn't gonna get the leverage it needs to shake that hook free. All right, so the retrieval for this is super simple. All you're gonna do is engage the reel and let this bait sink all the way to the bottom. One trick to this is turning your reel sideways like this. And uh, what it's gonna do is not, uh, it's gonna allow this bait to evenly uh, let line out so you're not gonna get as much backlashes and everything. Once it hits the bottom, I give it a half turn to one full turn of that reel off the bottom. And what I do is I just start hopping it. And uh, you're giving it big hops that are gonna hop this thing six to sometimes 10 feet off the bottom. And then you wanna let that bait flutter down on semi-slack line. Now, when, it, when you yank it up off, that looks like a bait trying to get away. It, uh, it's gonna grab the fish's attention, but then when you let that bait sink back down on semi-slack line, you're getting that bait to flutter back down. It looks like wounded, dying bait, and those bass are gonna see an opportunity to strike. The other thing is, when, I'm, when that bait's sinking, I wanna follow down that line. I wanna keep it uh, semi-slack. I'm gonna follow it down with my rod because I wanna feel for anything different. If that bait stops sinking too early before, it, before I think it's near the bottom, you probably got a, uh, a bite. That fish just uh, hit it. Also, if you feel anything, if you feel a little tick or something, that's a strike. You wanna yank up on it and set that hook. Uh, another thing is you can, uh, every once in a while, give it some different yanks. I give it like a little one, two, or sometimes I'll give it a tap, tap, and then a big one. And that's just to give these fish something different, just to trigger them. Uh, you know, if they're not biting, you gotta try to change up some things to get them going again. Lastly is when you do actually hook up with a fish, you wanna play them out. There's no hurry to get them back in the boat. Um, some guys use very heavy spoons, one ounce to a couple ounces. And uh, when you're using that, you wanna get that fish into the boat as fast as you can because there, there's, those uh, spoons are so heavy that those fish can really work them loose out of their mouth. But when you're using a half ounce like we're using today, um, there's no hurry. Those fish aren't gonna be able to shake, their, uh, shake that loose very easily. 
And a lot of times when you're doing this, you're hooking these fish barely in the side of the mouth. That erratic motion of the spoon and stuff doesn't allow those fish always to get a great grab on that bait. And so you wanna make sure you, uh, you play these fish and really uh, don't try to force them into the boat or you could lose a lot of them. All right, so one thing to note, you can cast this thing. Even though I'm talking about vertical jigging, this thing also works with casts. And what you're gonna do is just make long casts out and let it sink to the bottom. Now this also applies to you shore anglers as well. You know, I try not to forget about you. Always throw some shout outs to you guys. Uh, if you're doing this from the shore, same thing. You just let it sink all the way to the bottom and then you give it a nice jerk off the bottom and you let it sink on semi-tight line because you wanna be feeling that bait as it um, flutters back down. You really wanna feel out to see if you get a bite or anything like that. Um, one thing to note, when you're fishing from the shore, uh, you're gonna snag this thing up, so you wanna make sure you use a little heavier line, maybe even a lighter wire hook, so that you can pull it free of any kind of snag. One of the biggest keys to this technique is location. You're fishing it vertically, so you're not gonna be able to cover a lot of water, so it's absolutely essential that you're fishing productive areas. Now, in the fall, bass move, uh, they follow bait into the back of creek channels and coves. So that's generally where you wanna start. Um, the, the easiest thing to do is use your graphs to mark bait fish, and also you can even see active bass on there. But most of us don't have quality graphs or don't have graphs at all, so there's some other things that you can key in. Like I said, if you start with these coves, big creek channels and things, and you start working your way back, and then identify big features that you think uh, these bass could really hang around, whether that is a steep bluff that's got some real deep water on it, you can really hug the bank with your boat and you can fish 20 to 40 feet deep without having to move the boat much. And that's why the bass like to hang there because they can move up and down those different uh, water depths without much effort. Then is any kind of little secondary points. Um, if the secondary point comes out into the creek channel, those fish will hang out somewhere on there and they'll ambush bait fish that's getting pushed over. So, you know, fish up and down the different depths on these different little uh, uh, secondary points. Uh, then same type of deal with any kind of island tops. If there's an island top in the middle of a creek channel, uh, you better believe there's most likely gonna be some bass on there as well. And then uh, docks. Docks are great year round. Uh, you can go up to them. These fish, they know they can go up shallow, they can follow up the dock up shallow, or they can come out way deep and just suspend underneath. And when they're suspended underneath the docks, uh, a spoon can be fantastic right out in front. And that's actually the first time I ever caught a spoonfish was I walked down in a dock like the one behind me at a launch ramp and uh, just dropped the spoon down, caught a bass the first, uh, the first drop, ended up catching quite a few bass because they were schooled all around there and was totally hooked on spooning. Another thing to keep in mind is because these bait fish are schooled up in the back of creek channels and coves this time of the year, there can be a lot of unproductive water. Uh, you know, there's gonna be you know, lots of space where there's no fish, but then when you find these areas, there's gonna be a lot of feeding fish and a, and a tool like this can really be essential. Now, some, some clues to seeing productive water, like I always say, is seeing active birds. If you go by a cove and you see a bunch of active birds, you see some egrets on the shoreline, some grebes working out, deep seagulls bopping up and down, that, that's a sign of life. There's probably bait fish and bass in that area. Start with those and then look for those key areas within that cove to try to zero in on the bass. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Man. Got hit a couple times there. Finally got a taker. Holy cow. Guys, these fish become so honed in to shad this time of the year that it's all about these little profiles. This really mimics the bait fish that they're eating. But then when it's fluttering down, it mimics the easy prey. Some other fish has already done the hard work. It's gone and it's wounded this thing. And these fish come up and they think they're getting a free meal out of it. Um, when, and using you know, little baits like this, uh, ripping lips, chaser spoon is the perfect thing. I like the vertical jigging when I'm using a half ounce, but if you're using these bigger ones, uh, you can also cast them out. A lot of different ways to use these spoons, but a lot of fun, no doubt about it. Guys, I'm Travis Moran. Hopefully you go out and you catch yourself some spoon fish this fall. Anyway, hit the like button, comment in the comment section below, and make sure you're subscribed to the Lucky Tackle Box YouTube channel. I'll catch you out on the water.